I first saw Samurai Gourmet in 2018. It was the morning after the Super Bowl and I was over at a friend's house. We decided to watch this weird food show that had just come out of Japan. I thought, okay, maybe I'll watch an episode or two and then I'll bounce. About five hours later, I left his house with a new favorite show. Samurai Gourmet is about a recent retiree, Takeshi, who realizes that his entire life has been based around work. Now that his working days are over, he needs to find a new purpose in life, a new meaning, and he finds it in food. He goes around Japan, hitting up different food spots, trying everything from the world's worst ramen, to a bento lunch on a movie set, to spaghetti with ketchup on it. Is that, is that real? Do people do that? Stop. Don't, don't do that. Eventually, he learns to let go of his working man's mindset, always trying to get ahead, and kind of learns to appreciate the moment uh, and the food around him. But the magic of the show isn't in the food. Now, rest assured, the food porn is real, and it is spectacular. But it's not the point. Throughout the series, Takeshi hallucinates a wandering samurai who becomes a sort of hero figure to Takeshi, kind of showing him the ideal version of himself. You know, younger, hotter, doesn't give a shit what anyone thinks, kind of does his own thing, very uh, cavalier. This vision of the samurai is interesting because it both helps and hinders Takeshi throughout the series. It's a vision that pushes him closer to his ideal self, but also causes inner turmoil and conflict and stress that he's not living up to his ultimate ideals. Takeshi deals with this conflict in two main ways both of which inform and reinforce the aesthetics and the themes of the show. Let's get into it. Part 1. Wabi Sabi. Wabi Sabi is a major part of the Japanese aesthetic. Its two root words are wabi, meaning a sort of rustic simplicity, a freshness, a quietness, um, imperfection, uh, while sabi refers to the beauty or the serenity that comes with old age. Uh, when the life of an object and its impermanence are evidenced in its wear. So when you put the two together, wabi-sabi is really the aesthetic of appreciating impermanence and simplicity and imperfection. It's an aesthetic not about making a grand statement for the ages to make something timeless and perfect. It is the opposite. There's something intimate in wabi-sabi that gets lost, I think, in the more Western ideals of beauty uh, that call for perfection and timelessness. A few years ago, I went to the Kölner Dome, the Cologne Cathedral, and it was incredibly beautiful. It was amazing. Uh, my girlfriend and I actually stayed for a service that was like all in German. I was like wearing a Captain America tee. Like we, we actually meant to leave, but then the service started. We kind of had to like sit there. <laughs> so I was just kind of sitting there in my Captain America shirt, like shit, I feel weird. <laughs> but it was fun. It was pretty cool. The first stone for the Cologne Cathedral was laid in 1248, and despite its having been rebuilt a few times, there was something ageless about how planned every stone was laid. You could tell that it was a building that was meant to last. But at the same time, the cathedral was so imposing, intense, intimidating almost, in its scale and its perfection. It felt like the building itself was holding you at arm's length. Wanted you to look up at it in awe for all time. Didn't want to reveal any of its flaws or imperfections to you. Now, Samurai Gourmet is incredibly well produced. The shots are gorgeous, the music and the lighting are on point, and Naoto Takanaka's performance as Takeshi is one of my favorite acting performances of all time. But the show is unafraid to show its imperfections. Some of the shots are stark, strange, ugly even. And in its willingness to show you the less beautiful parts of itself, the show allows you to become more intimately involved. Takeshi has many insecurities about his age, about his place in the world, about his unrealized potential. But in the end, he's able not only to handle these perceived flaws with grace, but to realize the beauty in being purely himself. To realize his own destiny outside of the perfection in his mind. In the end, Takeshi is able to live with the fact that he isn't the samurai. 
He's not the perfect ideal of what he wants to be, and that's okay. Takeshi uses the ideals of Wabi Sabi to appreciate the imperfections within himself, and as he does, so does the viewer. Part 2. Natsukashi and Nostalgia Natsukashi is a Japanese term that's kind of similar to nostalgia, but kind of different. The main difference is, when folks think about nostalgia, there's a sort of wistfulness, a melancholy, a kind of sadness with that thing no longer existing. And in Natsukashi, there's none of that. Natsukashi is like looking back on the good old days, uh, laughing and sharing stories with an old friend. You look back and you're fond of the memories, but there's something special about leaving them in that time and that place. Their temporality, the fact that they're bound to a specific place and a specific time, adds to the fondness and positive feelings instead of detracting from them. Takeshi goes back to his childhood days constantly in Samurai Gourmet. He goes back to the time when he snuck some croquettes in school with his senpai. Uh, he goes back to the first time he ever liked the taste of mackerel when he was out in a hotel on the ocean shore. Those times are over now, but that's okay. Those are special moments, not only because they happened, but because Takeshi knows that he can't go back. Now, the unnamed samurai who shows up in nearly every episode, uh, Takeshi's ideal version of himself, is interesting specifically because he's the embodiment of nostalgia, as opposed to Natsukashi. He's this ideal, he's this unreachable thing that Takeshi wishes he could be, and feels bad that he isn't. He does occasionally inform Takeshi's actions. He does kind of push Takeshi occasionally to be closer to Takeshi's ideal self. But most of the time, Takeshi simply gazes in awe at the samurai's actions, thinking, wow, that's amazing, but I could never do that. In this way, despite being a part of Takeshi and helping him navigate this new, workless, retiree world, he also serves as the show's main antagonist. He's this lingering feeling of what could be if only Takeshi weren't himself. Takeshi is shown as a timid worker, uh, someone who always got the same bento lunch set at the company cafeteria, a meek person who never stood up for themselves and occupied their free time reading old heroic samurai tales. Takeshi is always looking into the past, a past that never existed for him, and imagining himself there. There's a sort of sweet melancholy to this feeling of wistful helplessness, this feeling that you are who you are, and you are where you're at, and that's not gonna change. It's easy to imagine that this samurai, this feeling of inferiority and yearning to be a greater image of oneself has always been with him, always told him that if he were braver, if he were more sure of himself, if he were stronger, he could be the person that he truly wants to be. Not that I've ever felt that. Nope. Not once. Never, never had any of those feelings before. Let's, let's move on. Part 3. Conclusion. Technically, Samurai Gourmet is a comedy. It plays a lot of Takeshi's adventures for comedic effect. He's awkward and gets himself into silly situations often. But comedy serves this sort of intimate show very well. The imperfections of Takeshi and of the show itself are funny. But it's not funny in the same way that... Seinfeld, or It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia are funny. Takeshi isn't a bad person, and the comedy doesn't come from watching his plans blow up in his face. It comes from relating to his struggles, and the feeling of vicarious joy that comes when he is victorious. We all know what it feels like to get these little victories in life, these things that just inch you closer to your ideal self. And watching someone get one on screen is truly heartwarming. 
Samurai Gourmet helps us to recognize the flaws in all of us and to come to a deeper understanding and appreciation of ourselves while doing it. It's about looking back on both the halcyon and the imperfect fondly and accepting both gracefully. There's no grand adventure in Samurai Gourmet. There's no dragon to slay, no lives to save. There's no real antagonist besides the very human pining for something that will never be, the ideal self that none of us could ever hope to achieve. The only thing stopping us from appreciating not just the moment, but time itself, the moments that came before, the beauty of its passing, and our place within it, is us. You know, there's another term that's used for the feeling of wabi-sabi. Natsukashi Purusato, which means a memory of one's hometown. It's not a surprise that Natsukashi and Wabi-Sabi are closely linked. Both feelings are heavily dependent on the appreciation of the passage of time. But the fact that one term is used in reference to the other is fascinating, and it is beautiful. Samurai Gourmet has a deeper goal, and it's a goal that's absent in most media, and especially most comedy. It's trying to evoke feelings of Natsukashi and Wabi-Sabi, of Natsukashi and Natsukashi Furusato in its viewer. It's trying to get us to think back on our hometown, on things that have passed, and to appreciate them, not because they were perfect, but because they're a part of us. It's trying to help us not only appreciate, but cherish the beauty of imperfection.